So, we always talk about training heavy, training hard, pushing our bodies to the limits. But in reality, it's when you back off is when you grow. This is one of the biggest factors that I learned from breaking my first world record to being on top for nearly 15 years. The trick was, was deloading. The first thing we have to ask ourselves is, what is deloading? Deloading has a lot of different meanings, especially in my system. Deloading can come from anywhere from making a workout shorter. We can deload in time. We can deload in intensity and max effort. We can deload in intensity of speed work. And we can also deload in intensity of the repetition method or accessories or winning warmups. The point is, is deloading usually means just taking something down so that the body can recover. What do we take out? Well, we'll get to that here in a second. In the 25 years plus that I have been training my ass off, I have learned that we gotta take three steps forward and one step back, meaning there is no four steps forward. And meaning that if your training protocol is showing you linearly progress, or any shape, way, or form progress longer than every four weeks, you're probably gonna set yourself up for either short, medium, or long-term failure. What does this mean? Well, in literally weeks, three weeks you can progress, and one week you gotta back down. Now that doesn't mean that you may feel like you need to back down. Sometimes when I've hit my third week of slowly ramping up everything, I felt my best. And that's when I have found, when I feel my absolute best is when I need to take a step back and let my body recover because I'm right on the line of overtraining. And that overtraining can be very, very hard to come out of that rut when you get stronger and stronger. That's why this gets so confusing. I did not learn that I had to take three steps forward and one step back until nearly almost my first world record where my body just kept progressing, progressing, and progressing. Then all of a sudden, progressing was halting. My body was not changing. I was not getting any better. And what I found was when I started to learn how to back off is when my progress went crazy. So in an equipped level squat, I started to notice that I had to learn this. I was squatting 1,085 pounds. And within one year to about a year and a half, my squat went to 1,200. And the only thing that I changed was the fact that every fourth week I would take something down and let my body recover. So to reiterate, in one month, we need one week down, okay? So that puts us at about a three to one ratio. So what I try to do with my training and programming, especially if you're following any kind of limited equipment, when this gets really, really important is when you don't have a lot of variation in your training. So you have to follow this to a T, especially if you train very specific, like IE, straight bar squats, straight bar bends, straight bar deadlifts all the time. This is gonna be even more and more important. There is a way to trick yourself out of not having to follow this three to one ratio if your variation is so vast that the body doesn't really need deloads, but I found that the older I got, I still needed this in my programming. So the point is, is that remember, three to one ratio, three weeks up, one week back, three weeks up, one week back. If you follow this, you're gonna notice that you're probably not gonna get sick as much, your appetite's gonna stay high, your anabolic hormones are gonna stay better, and you're not gonna overtrain nearly as hard. This was the biggest trick I had to learn from going from a 1,080 squat to 1,100. So now that you know that we have a three to one ratio, we work hard three weeks and then we cut one week back, what do we cut out? Well, the trick is we have to cut out what we're good at. And that sounds crazy, but that means if you can strain, cut out max. If you're explosive and really athletic, cut out dynamics. If you're in really good shape, cut out your accessories and your warmups. The point is, is that you still train. What you keep in is dependent upon what you're good or you're bad at. So if you're out of shape and you're a fat dude, you probably wanna leave the volume. you know. And if you're super, super strong, you probably wanna cut out the maxing. And if you're super explosive, you probably want to cut out the explosive training. The point is, is that we always tend to go back what's easy for us versus we don't maintain what's hard for us. So a lot of times it depends on what part of the cycle we're in. So on the Patreon channel here in a second, we're going to go over all the stuff and show you how we break this down into a monthly cycle and then show you how we change this to keep this going optimal. But what are some of the consequences that are ensued if we don't listen to this rule? Well, the first one that I've noticed over many, many years is that I lose my appetite. I start to get to where I don't want to eat and I'm not hungry. That's step one to know that the next workout better come down a little bit and I better recover or the next steps start to happen. Step two is my sleep quality starts to go bad. I lay down at my normal time about 8.30, about nine o'clock I want to fall asleep and I can't fall asleep. It's like my brain won't shut off. Um, I'm tired but my body won't come down and usually that's another key indicator that I haven't listened to my appetite and I'm also overtraining. And then finally, if I don't listen to those two, 
sickness ensues. What that means is that I'll start to get sinus infections, I'll start to get sick, I'll start to have fluish feelings, I'll start to get immensely sore. And it's not because my diet's not right or my sodium's not high enough or my water weight's not high enough. It's just like that sickness soreness where you just get up and you feel heavy, you feel like you're walking with brick shoes on. That's when you get to plant C. So the thing of it is, is that you have massive consequences to not listen to three to one. So just remember, take three steps forward, take one step back, and you'll find that the amount of steps that you take in a five, 10, or 15 year process are gonna be so much higher than if you just keep giving everything you have every week. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way, and that's what makes training and understanding training so complex and so complicated. So today, we didn't talk about training hard. We actually talked about the opposite. We talked about taking stuff down and deloading. Remember that deloading needs to be in your repertoire. You need to understand it. You need to be able to utilize it, and you need to understand if anything you take away from this video, train hard three weeks, back off one. That's what got me from a little bit under 1100 squat to a 1200 squat in one year, was actually going back to the basics and going three to one ratio on train hard to back off.